urinary tract infection is simply infection of the urinary tract. So the body is divided into systems. And of course, you have the, just like you have the digestive system, neurologic system, you have the urinary tract or urinary system, which is made up of the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder, and the urethra. Okay, these four parts form the urinary system. Any infection in any part of the system is what we simply call the urinary tract infection. Basically, every infective organism can cause urinary tract infection. Um, the most common ones are your bacteria, your fungi, and viruses. Um, yeah, you have virus infections that can cause urinary tract infection. Um, you have fungi that can cause, especially in immunocompromised individuals. For an example, people on high levels of um, um, suppressants, immunosuppressants, or high levels of chemotherapies, or patients who have come down with retroviral infections. Then, in very common cases, are bacterial infections that cause urinary tract infection, which are the common ones that we see. You know, so you have things like streptococcus, you have things like um, H influenza, you have things like E. coli. In worst cases, you have Klebsiella, and of course, um, you know, all of these bacteria can actually cause urinary tract infection. When they when they affect the different levels of the body, they have their different symptoms. So some of them get as far as the kidneys cause things like pyelonephritis and um, and it further goes down to damaging symptoms. Okay, so it, it can be caused by bacteria, fungi, viruses, are the commonest one. Protozoas can also cause it and sometimes worms infections. Five major steps actually preventing urinary tract infections. Number one is maintaining a good hygiene. Um, hygiene has been seen to be implicated in urinary tract infections. And um, if you are not very careful with, especially with the underwears, you can recurrently cause urinary tract infection. And then of course, with the areas of sanitation, the restrooms are very implicative. And even in, you know, partners, sexual partners, sometimes you may need to uh, be very cautious. Okay. So basically hygiene. Um, oftentimes you see um, ladies not properly, um, not properly, you know, use their underwears or sometimes they don't even use it or properly wash. So it's usually recommended that they wash recurrently with um, a, um, maybe a hypo, a sanitizer, as it were, or a jig, a detergent, and sometimes even iron. Okay, the reason for iron is to give the heat if you don't want to discard completely. All right. Other prevention prevention mechanisms includes proper dieting. Okay. Um, when you we eat right, we prevent a lot of things. Sometimes when we do a lot of sugar, you provide a habitable environment for these microbes to grow. All right. A lot of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes we even think that high pro protein diets are very effective, but no, you further even provide because you see in Proper, in improper dieting, you alter the pH of the body. This pH of the body is what is responsible for the um, maintaining a, a proper environment that organisms does not grow. When you distort it, certain organisms now begin to thrive in places where they're not supposed to thrive. The third thing is um, water, hydration, good level of hydration, okay, keeps us consistently um, cleansed out. The fourth one is, um, it's been said that especially in women, it's ought to clean from front to back. Rather, yes, from front to back, not from back to front. Okay, that's the proper way of cleaning. And then there's been some um, um, drinks that have been used in, especially very, very drinks, cranberry drinks have been very effective in the GI. So if you have drinks that have the cranberry or berry nectar, you have um, yeah a good chance of preventing it. Um, some other ways, Preventing regular testing, you can prevent your urinary tract infections. Yeah. The symptoms of urinary tract infections include a recurrent urge to want to use the restroom. You have that recurrent, and sometimes it could be very little amount of urine that could come out. You could have burning sensation in the process of urinating. You could have, you know, itchiness. You could have cloudy urine. Sometimes the um, discolored urine that could either be red or 
that cook colored and all that and then um one other thing pain pain especially low abdominal pain one of the classical symptoms low abdominal pain for men you could see of course um some burning sensations on trying to urinate usually not so much and then uh, they could also have discharge but that happens more with sexually transmitted infections now the point about improper treatment especially in females is that it's responsible for high levels of infertility when it's not properly treated the bad part of urinary tract infection is that it takes a quiet stage and right there in the body and many people walk away especially guys especially men they feel that well, they're good and so it takes a quiet stage and then over time it's the cause of all they become transmitters then the women eventually are the ones who come down with the symptoms but they or never come down with the symptoms at all and then life is good the treatment plan for urinary tract infections can last for more than two weeks it's important that you do not prescribe or you do not recommend yourself many of these roadside drugs that people do especially when you hear things like staff oreos and stuff no none of that is that is just very unacceptable in the treatment of urinary tract infections, you, you get tested first and you get drugs that are sensitive to um, these infections. Now, for some reasons, when adequate doses of these drugs are not taken, especially to completion, like I said to you, many times the treatment could last for as much as two weeks because of the level for where they are. The urinary tract infection uh, is one of the lowest parts of the body, all right? So you, you have to do that long. If you don't do that, you begin to grow res resistant strains of these microbes and then you have to do it again and again. But the next time you're coming back to heat it, you don't get the same um, response like you got the first time. So it's important that whenever you're going to get treated, you treat for a very long time and as much as two weeks, sometimes injections first and then you complete the dosage with a, lot of with a couple of tablets that are sensitive to the organism. Whenever there is recurrence of urinary tract infection, it's important that you pay attention to hygiene. Check hygiene levels very importantly. And that simply means that you may want to discard all um, you know, underwears and replace them, have proper baths. Just pay more attention, number one. You never treat urinary tract infections without trying to treat your partner. It's important that you, you know, check out your partner, especially when it is one partner, okay? If it's multiple partners, um, you just have to do something about that, all right? Okay, but then you want to also pay attention to your partner. The second and the third important thing is to check your fluid balance and all the other exogenous things you take. Now, when you're treating with the drugs, I recommend that you do injections first and then you do orals. Many times, orals don't get as deep and as far as what injections will do. So even when you see sensitivity for certain drugs, you want to try the injections first. For minimum, for me, I try practice for five days minimum and then subsequently um, the books sometimes say up to seven days all right and you do um, subsequently you do the injections when you do that you get a better result because of the penetrating capacity of injections compared to tablets